Hey travelers, welcome back to another episode of Traveling Tips. Today, we are going to downtown Washington, D.C. to explore the monuments on the National Mall. I've had the pleasure of visiting the National Mall so many times growing up, whether on field trips or family outings, but today's visit is extra special because we are exploring two new monuments that have opened in the last year and visiting some of my old favorites where I'd love to show you some tips about visiting. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. When you think of Washington, D.C., what comes to mind? Maybe it's the White House, maybe the cherry blossoms every spring, or maybe the Smithsonian Museums. For many visitors to Washington, D.C., it's the National Mall. Home to monuments to presidents and prominent leaders, the National Mall really is like America's backyard. It's not a shopping mall, it's one of our national parks. Located on the western edge of Washington, D.C., the National Mall and adjacent Tidal Basin are giant open spaces for all Americans and international visitors to enjoy. The National Mall runs from the west front of the Capitol to the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. On this land that is maintained by the National Park Service, monuments honor wars, presidents, and influential leaders in our nation's history. The National Mall is home to many of the Smithsonian Museums as well, which we'll cover those in another episode. We'll begin our look at these monuments with one of the newest memorials built, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. Located on Independence Avenue near the Tidal Basin, the memorial was dedicated in 2011 after years of design and fundraising efforts. This was the first memorial to be built on the National Mall to honor an individual other than a U.S. president. The theme of this memorial is out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope, derived from a quote from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, which was delivered just a short distance away on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. Other quotes from Dr. King are engraved on the walls that flank the tall carved image of the civil rights leader. This memorial is free to visit and is conveniently located near the heart of the National Mall. The other memorials on the mall honor fallen soldiers from our nation's wars and presidents who had significant impact on our country's history. Located adjacent to Freedom Plaza at Pennsylvania Avenue between 14th and 15th streets is the brand new World War I Memorial. Dedicated in April of 2021, this memorial honors the fallen and those who served in the Great War, which ended over 100 years ago. This is the second World War I memorial within the District of Columbia, the first being dedicated to the citizens from D.C. that fought and lost their lives in World War I. Located a few blocks away along 15th Street is the World War II Memorial. Dedicated in 2004, the memorial recognizes the struggle and victories on both the European and Pacific fronts during World War II. Pylons engraved with the names of the U.S. states and territories circle a central fountain pool. The memorial sits low in the ground to limit obstructing the view from the Lincoln Memorial to the Washington Monument. To 
the east on Independence Avenue is another brand new memorial that honors President Dwight D. Eisenhower. This memorial highlights Eisenhower's military career, where he led the U.S. forces during the D-Day invasion of Europe in World War II, and his presidential career, where he championed the interstate highway system. Above the memorial is a large mesh tapestry that depicts the scene on the Normandy beaches during the D-Day landing on June the 6th, 1944. The new Eisenhower Memorial is located across the street from the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum and down the street from the National Museum of the American Indian and the Capitol Building. The centerpiece of the National Mall is easily the Washington Monument. This 555 foot tall obelisk sits upon a hill and is dedicated to the first president of the United States. It was built between 1848 and 1884. Construction was interrupted by the American Civil War. If you look closely, you can see that midway up the monument, the stone changes color. This is because when construction resumed after the end of the Civil War, the stone used came from a different quarry than the stone used before the war. You can line up day of to secure tickets for a ride up to the observation deck at the top of the monument. Make sure you get there early because tickets sell out quickly. To the west at the end of the reflecting pool is the Lincoln Memorial. This monument honors the 16th president of the United States. Words from the Gettysburg Address and the Emancipation Proclamation are engraved on the walls inside. 36 columns surround the memorial, symbolizing the 36 states in the Union when Lincoln was in office. One of the best secrets of this memorial is that you can actually walk around the outside corner to get a view of the Potomac River side of the monument, which provides one of the best views of Memorial Bridge, Arlington National Cemetery, and the Arlington, Virginia skyline. On the mall side, you can stand in the exact spot where Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech in 1963 during the March on Washington. Adjacent to the Lincoln Memorial are memorials to two of our modern wars, the Korean War Memorial and the Vietnam War Memorial Wall. The Vietnam Wall is particularly emotional. The names of all Americans that died fighting in the war are engraved on the wall. Families of the fallen and visitors alike can use the National Park Service website to identify the specific panels where names of soldiers and family members who died during the Vietnam War are engraved. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons so that YouTube will show my videos to more people. Along the water of the Tidal Basin is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial. FDR is the only president to serve more than two terms in U.S. history. He was elected president four times and died in office during his fourth term, following the end of World War II. The memorial depicts symbolic images from his presidency, 
from his fireside chats to the Great Depression to the end of World War II. The space is divided into four parts, each part representing one of FDR's terms as president and highlighting his accomplishments and struggles during that term. In the summertime, large fountains are turned on in the memorial, which make it a great location also to cool off. Given its proximity to the tidal basin, it makes a great location to experience the Cherry Blossom Festival, which happens every spring. There's so much to explore in this part of DC. And best of all, visiting is free. I think the best time to go to the monuments is right around sunset or just after dark when the lights come on. Visiting the monuments at night just gives them a whole different personality than what you see during the day. So I highly recommend seeing them in the daytime and in the evening. If you're visiting in the summer, DC gets so hot and so humid, so make sure to pack plenty of water, sunscreen, and take time to rest in the shade before continuing your adventure around the National Mall. To help beat the heat, you can buy a ticket for one of the hop on, hop off buses that circle the mall, or take a Segway tour. For more information on the monuments shown here, check out the links down below in the description. Also, check out my guide for visiting the monuments on the National Mall on TravelingTips.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.